Hey there, everybody. It's uh, it's a pretty warm, humid day, and a friend of mine just dropped off a handful. I'll show you the a handful of very currently sad purple echinacea. It's a uh, echinacea purpurea, and they are little clusters. Each little grouping of them is another set of individual plant. And so at the moment, we are just teasing them apart. I'm actually going to give them a quick little dip in the water. Just to make separating the roots a little bit easier. And you can see how they just tease apart. And part of this is to give myself some kind of low stress physical activity because I'm technically supposed to be on bed rest, if not a little bit of light duty work at the moment. Um, but I figure standing here and potting and talking to you all counts. And so I'm taking the ittiest, bittiest baby ones, and I'm sticking them to the side at the moment and just focusing on these big happy guys. One more dip. And we'll just kind of tease this a little bit out, not unlike knotting or unknotting fur or hairs. So just a little, just a little light grating after receipt. Like something like this is definitely not going to be an attractive purchase for someone, but they can be a reinvestment for myself. And I mean, if I feel like I have not enough, I could certainly plant those guys in and let them, let them do what they want to do. Now, it is important, I am doing this gently, but it is important, I hope that the camera picks this up, um, for ones like this, where there is definitely two individual main sections of crown, but you can see that it is very much uh, connected in the middle. And some people would prefer to leave that, other people would come in with a pair of snips or secateurs or like force it apart and just kind of crack it. Um, but we're just gonna, we're just gonna leave this as one big happy cluster. And it'll kind of appear like the others. And so I've got my little empty pot with all of this and the plan is to just take a bit of this substrate. You can see we've got some of the biochar bits in here, and if they're really big compared to the roots, I can just give them a little bit more of a crack, a little bit of dirt. the soil mix, the substrate, and we'll tamp down the first bit just to give us a little bit more stability to work with. But we'll take this, this large root here and there are some folks who prefer to just jam it down into the pot and then let all of these roots just kind of be in the same layer and then bury it. And I am not personally a fan of that. I much prefer to get this resituated. I much prefer getting them in a rough area. You may note that this is kind of a small pot for this, but uh, it takes so, so much material to fill those big pots. So I'd rather start with things that have a little bit of soil mix or like a potted from last year to start. And so what I like to do is just take a little bit of substrate and then just tease the roots up a little bit so that some of the particulate falls out and in between the roots. And we're just kind of lightly letting the roots kind of differentiate themselves in different sections of the soil profile in the pot. 
And then once I feel good about it, they'll get a final layer that will tamp down a little bit more firmly so that they stay standing up. And then just firm it a little bit. And uh, these particular plants came from the pollinator garden at our town's library, which I have been volunteering some time at, and a little bit of effort and some knowledge occasionally, uh, going over plants and their list and talking about the greenhouse setup and talking about uh, integrating certain plants and disinviting others from their list. Uh, and this guy will get a quick little, quick little soak in my water bucket. And I'll show you those in just a minute. So anyway, uh, the last time I was down at the community garden uh, was to help build a set of uh, ADA compliant roll-up raised gardening containers. Um, basically raised beds with uh, an undercut in the frame of them so that folks in wheelchairs or who need to be seated uh, in order to do their gardening basically someone who's got those physical requirements can still partake in the joys of getting their hands dirty and playing with uh, all of the soil and the plants. Something like that, probably a little too big. So I'll just crunch it up just a little bit. Just a little bit. I have a little worm friend. You can go into the pot that those guys are in. And so, uh, I was there for building some, some garden beds, and as we were filling them a bit with some potting mix, um, I noticed some biology, uh, macro pod, no, I, you know, I'm not entirely sure what the, the best connotation for it is, um, but I saw a large animal. Uh, soil animal, so, you know, not, not very big, you know, yay big, uh, but I didn't know what it was, and so I, being the person I am, grabbed him up, went, eh, you probably belong somewhere else a little bit more appropriately than in this raised garden bed, and so I started picking them up to carry them off to the side, and the person at the library who is kind of in charge of these programs who I adore and think is an absolutely wonderful person and if you're watching this video hi glad you're here uh, I do actually like Loki uh, love you and appreciate everything that you're doing in town but we have a pretty serious disagreement about how those arthropods are supposed to be and she looked at me and said, oh, we're going to fight. I can tell. So I think there are two types of people in this world. And obviously this is a setup for a joke. Those of you who have been here before um, know that there are uh, many types of people in this world. Many, many numbers and types of people in this world. And that you can't just pigeonhole like that. But for the sake of a joke and for the sake of an argument right here, and right now, um, there are like two types of gardeners in this world where um, someone will see uh, a type of soil life that they are unfamiliar with and their first thought is to remove with, um, I don't want to call it extreme prejudice, but uh, remove without considering their role in that particular environment. And I have challenges with this approach. Uh, I can't take it myself because I don't have that kind of heavy familiarity with 
a ton of insect life such that I can recognize it on hand. And I would rather err on the side of, I don't know what you are, and I don't know entirely what you do, but I'm willing to give you a chance and let me find out what you are and what you do, and then I will be able to be better informed of this decision if I encounter those of your kind in the future. And so far, for me, that's worked relatively well. I don't have a ton of uh, diseases or pest issues in the garden that last for anything more than a season or two. Uh, fingers crossed that the potato beetle issue that we've experienced the past couple of years does not materialize in the same way as it has. Um, but I haven't seen them destroy my goji berries yet, so hope springs eternal. And so my general approach is to just think to myself, um, yeah, we could, we could very easily just incorporate the fact that this bug exists, take a picture, make a note, track it, figure out what it is, do a little bit of uh, home research and citizen science, and figure out what it is that they do in our garden context. Are they a nutrient cycler of dead plant material? Are they a type of nematode that feeds on certain bacteria that are prevalent in our area or our soils that helps to cycle the proteins and the minerals that make up their cell walls. Is that something that this creature does? Is it going to make it so that I have the ability to plant more things because it is clearing out more of the detritus and cycling, um, you know, making pore space in the soil or uh, creating aggregates or sites of small micro manuring in the soil where it now is increasing the fertility of that small area that I found it in. Uh, these are all these are all possibilities in my mind every time I encounter a bug that I don't recognize. And I know that bug is kind of, I don't know, species if you're an entomologist or someone who specializes in uh, crustaceans or things of that nature. So I don't mean any disrespect, just as I don't mean any disrespect to the folks who uh, garden the way that I choose not to. There's nothing that I think is appreciably wrong with your approach, um, but I think that you, if you are that type of gardener, might be unnecessarily hindering the progress of your garden by preventing the type of close predator-prey relationships that so much relies on in these ecosystems. And so, you know, it's it's something that I can chuckle about because it's it's friends disagreeing on a topic that they're both very passionate about. Um, but at the same time, I, uh, I know, deep in my heart of hearts, that she and I are probably going to disagree on a couple of these approaches that we're taking in the community gardens. And since they are not mine, it is my responsibility as a visiting volunteer gardener um, to just make it so that uh, we can realize the goals of their project. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean that I'm going to be killing all the bugs that I don't recognize that are in their gardens, but it might mean that I am looking at more judicious ways of determining whether or not I can convince them to let them stay. And so I think that that's a way forward for this disagreement. And it's nice to have that disagreement with a friend who is interested in the way that I do things, um, but is not necessarily entirely sold on the idea that 
we don't have to kill the bugs that we don't recognize. So, I don't know, just thoughts that I have. Now, the rest of these little managanas are wanting to be themselves. Uh, I have a handful in here, and I'm, I'm fine with only having two, four, six, eight, ten, ten of these echinaceas or so um, to bring. They're, they're, they're not a common popular seller, but you know, we'll, we'll stick a few more. Uh, but several of these are going to go into the gardens and we'll, uh, yeah, I think we'll, we'll call that there. If I find any bugs in the garden, I'll bring the phone with me just in case. And if I find any, any crawlers and creepers in there, uh, then we'll call them out. We'll, we'll get a little real world example, but, uh, if not till next time, thanks for watching. Happy planting.